Hi, this is Jill Simonello, and I am the managing editor with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And this week, we have a 24-hour loan of the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. This is not all new for 2021, but it does have some significant changes that we are going to walk you through in addition to a completely new interior and some pretty cool technology. So let's take a closer look right now. I do want to start with the engine, even though it is not new. I figure it's worth a quick look because this is the same 2.7 liter V6 engine that was in the previous generation. And it does really well. It has nice, smooth, clean, seamless power throughout the entire acceleration curve, delivers 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. My only exception to the clean, smooth, seamless power is the auto stop start system. So this engine does have an auto stop start system that frankly I don't like and really I haven't found a system that I do like but I really don't like this one because there is just a little bit of a lag between when you take your foot off the brake and the engine re-engages which causes a little bit of hesitation and can be a problem if you're trying to mer merge quickly into traffic. While we have the engine compartment open, I would like to say that everything is, well, first off, really clean, but second, very easy to reach and pretty well placed. So you've got your dipstick right here. You have your washer fluid right here, and you have your battery jack right here. The biggest change to the Lincoln Nautilus for the 2021 model year is going to have to be the interior. Once you power it up, you can notice the 12.3 inch digital display that shows all of your gauges and you have a huge new 13.2 inch center screen. Frankly, this entire area here has been completely upgraded and redesigned and looks a lot better, a lot more up level and a lot less plasticky than the previous iteration of the interior. If you'll remember before, the screen was stuck right here. There were air vents, um, I think above it, and it just looked like a big swath of plastic cheapness. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to describe that, but uh, with this new design, it looks much more up level and you can see the wood finishing touches, the nice leather on the dash with the excellent stitching, the really attractive looking horizontal vents here. You've got your parking controls here and your camera control there. Um, and, and rather than having your push button gearing, so this is not new, put they, this vehicle has had push button gearing before, but previously it used to be vertically around the screen and now they've moved it horizontal. So overall, the, the look of the interior is much more up level and has a more horizontal focus, which frankly to me looks more well done, more finished, and heck of a lot more elegant and upscale. SYNC 4 is also new for the 2021 model year on the Lincoln Nautilus. And one of the big benefits of this is the overall wireless environment. So you have wireless CarPlay as well as wireless charging. So I really appreciate the fact that you can completely cut the cord with this system in this vehicle. Another thing to note is this is in fact a touch environment and so far I found that it works fairly well, uh, easy to swipe and uh, it doesn't have a lot of misses. Some systems, you know, the screen, I don't know if it's because I don't have a lot of circulation in my fingers or whatever, but when I touch it, um, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but I appreciate that this works the way you think it should and it's pretty easy to go between Apple CarPlay here and your native car system there. Uh, you can also make some adjustments over here. So you've, I like the split screen look to it. I like the audio here with the navigation here. And when you are in CarPlay, this is to me a huge bonus. You can deal with your native audio system here, or you can look at your native navigation. So a lot of systems, as soon as you plug in CarPlay, it kind of 
tunes out your native navigation system, but here you have the option to look at both Waze and your native system. So I don't know why you would want two maps, but you could have two maps if you wanted to. And one is Waze and the other is your car's system. So I find that this works pretty well. And, you know, I like the menu options that you can go into and customize, <laughs> which speaks of something else. You know, the seat customization is pretty phenomenal. I'm uh, on the short side of things. I'm five feet tall. I weigh 95 pounds. So basically what I've done is I've gone into the seat settings for the driver and I've pumped everything all the way up. So all the cushions, all the bolstering, and uh, I'm getting a pretty decent seat position. The seat itself is pretty comfortable for me. And uh, you can also point to the fact that, hey, look at that. <laughs> You've got a seat massager. So these are the 20 way or 22 way adjustable seats that are in the Nautilus. And they are all new for the 2021 model year in this vehicle. Now, another one of the cool new features on the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus is going to be the phone as key option. So Lincoln has actually given us a phone that is paired to the vehicle that will allow us to not only open, but also start the vehicle just by having the phone on our person. So just for reference, I'm going to show you over here. <laughs> I put the keys away from the vehicle on my notebook. Hopefully I won't forget them that way. Um, <laughs> but now I'm gonna walk up to the car. You can see because the, um, mirrors are in it's locked so I just have the phone in my hand and it unlocked and now I'm getting in the vehicle I shut the door and as you can see the key is still out there on my notepad I haven't changed that I'm gonna take the phone and put it in the charging tray and then The vehicle starts up, I can drive away without the key because my phone is acting as the key. Another cool feature on the Lincoln Nautilus is going to be the Copilot 360 Plus. And this is kind of a beefed up version of the Copilot 360 safety suite that is on most Ford vehicles. So in addition to your adaptive cruise control and your uh, like lane keep assist functionality, you get a couple of extra features. So the first one is going to be the 360 degree camera. So you can activate the forward camera by hitting this button right here underneath the screen. It shows you the around view as well as the forward view. Now, if you hit it again, it changes the views uh, out of the front of the vehicle, and then it turns it off. To get the rear facing camera and the around view, you're just gonna have to hit the reverse button. So. In addition to this 360 degree camera, another feature this vehicle gets is enhanced active park assist. Now, unlike the Genesis GV80, you have to stay in the vehicle and you are going to have to uh, use your foot for brake and gas, but the vehicle will steer you into the spot and it will get you there without bumping into anything. So that is always a bonus, especially in a place like Chicago where uh, parking can be at a bit of a premium and sometimes you could get a little bit nervous or if people are coming up and down your street you know you don't want to have to you don't want to have to maneuver 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 and out in out in so this is kind of a one and done feature and it will take the stress out of parallel parking especially if somebody's behind you and looks a little bit impatient so I know there's a spot up here we are going to test out this feature and see exactly how it works So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in drive to pull out. <laughs> then I am going to activate the system by hitting the little P button between two lines. I am looking for a spot. I want this one right here. Um, so it says space found, stop, shift to reverse. And now I'm just gonna let the car steer for me while somebody waits patiently behind me. And wow, that's a little bit of a tighter angle than I would have done. <laughs> um, but look at that. It's pulling me perfectly into the spot. Plenty of room. 
and I am using the brake and the gas. So it's telling me to stop, shift it to drive, drive forward slowly. And now it's done. Now, the other thing that this system will do is it will pull you out of a spot. And sometimes if you parked and you had plenty of space before you got out, other people move around, they park around you, and they can make getting out of a spot a little bit difficult. So Lincoln Nautilus can help you with that. Again, you just hit this P button and you're gonna hit the active park assist. And to activate it, you just hit your blinker. So I need to exit on the left side of the vehicle and it says release the steering wheel, release the steering wheel, shift into reverse, and drive backwards slowly. So again, I have my foot on the brake. It's telling me to shift to drive. And it's finished. So it doesn't pull you completely out of the spot, but it puts you at an angle to get out of the spot safely and without hitting anything. Okay, I wanted to go ahead and grab the sticker sheet really quick so that we could look at this specific vehicle and the options on it. And there really aren't that many options, frankly. It has a cargo utility package, a mini spare wheel, the roof rack side rails, which is that right there, and the ultra comfort 22-way power adjustable seat. So those seats that I was talking about earlier, they are available not standard with the black label model. So the all-in pricing of this vehicle right here is $68,295. That does include the $995 destination fee. So when you look at what you get on this vehicle, and we've talked about a lot of cool features, including the uh, perk assist and the digital key, uh, I think something under $70,000 is pretty good, especially when you compare it to some of the other vehicles out there. So we recently had the Genesis GV80 and the Acura MDX, and uh, both of those vehicles are pretty comparably priced, and maybe the GV80 has a little bit more technology, but uh, I, I think that this has probably got a little more technology than the MDX, um, but it doesn't have the third row. So I think this is an interesting choice if you're looking for luxury. I think this is an affordable option compared to perhaps some of the German automakers where everything is an option. Since this vehicle does have the 22-way power adjustable seats, I do want to spend just a little bit of time talking about seat comfort. So we're going to start in the driver's seat and I will hop in the back as well. And uh, while these seats are not the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in, I have to be honest for you with you, this is not perfectly adjustable for the fifth percentile female, but I imagine everybody else will be able to contour this seat perfectly for them. The seat is pretty comfortable you know the the headrest is nice and you know squishy the the seat bottoms have a little bit of cushion while they're still firm um, the side bolsters don't grip me because i'm too thin but they would grip most people uh, but they're not overpowering either so i don't feel like i'm reaching around the side bolsters to do anything so a generally comfortable seat but it just still feels a little bit big for somebody my size. The one thing that I wish this seat did, I think there needs to be 23 or maybe 24 adjustments. I wish the seat bottom went down. Uh, the seat bottom goes up just a little bit and I feel like I have to sit just a little bit closer to the pedals in order to reach them very well because I can't extend my leg out. And so I just wish one more little adjustment in the down position and I think I'd probably say these seats were among the most comfortable I've driven, but I think it's just the fact that the seat bottom tilts up just a little bit that is, is throwing me off. Um, I only have this car for 24 hours. I've mentioned that before. And, and so sometimes it takes me a couple of days to find the perfect seating position as I hit buttons and adjust things. And so in the first couple of hours, I haven't found that perfect position just yet, but I love all of the adjustability and I specifically love those massaging seats. Uh, all right, so in terms of a driving position, I do wanna point out this has a higher belt line than a lot of SUVs that I've driven recently. Uh, often they come down to give you a bigger 
window here, which gives you better visibility. Now, my visibility isn't bad. I have a clean shot out of the front. Um, there's pretty decent visibility out the side. The side mirror here does pose a little bit of a blind spot. So when I'm in a uh, four-way stop or crosswalk situation, I do find myself leaning around it just a little bit. Um, but I think that has to do with the higher belt line. So I just generally feel a little bit short <laughs> in this vehicle. I know I'm short, but I feel short and I don't always feel short in vehicles. So that's what I want to say about the driver's seat. Let's take a look at the back seat and the amenities that you have back there. All right, so hopping into this seat here, obviously this is the middle seat the, in the back. You, nobody's ever really supposed to sit here. Although I will say as a youngest child, I spent a lot of time here with two older sisters. Um, this isn't this isn't bad. This is a pretty decent location right here. The seat has a little bit of bounce, a little bit of cushion. So you're not sitting on cardboard or don't feel like you're sitting on concrete or anything like that. And uh, the, the hump, below your feet isn't super high so you know i'm only having like a couple of inches to travel and my my legs are mostly on the seat bottom so this middle seat here not horrible obviously when you move over into <laughs> the outboard passenger seats that is where the comfort happens and the seats have some really good cushion and and foam to them i feel some nice support on my tailbone um you know, my shoulders feel nice and supported. Lumber feels really good. I would say this is a pretty decent position overall. Let's just, for giggles, hook the seatbelt. Sometimes people in the back have a problem with the seatbelt. Nope, it doesn't rub my neck. So this is good. It hits me in all the right places. This would be comfortable. Um, back here, I do want to point out, other than the seat comfort being a thumbs up, there aren't a lot of amenities. There is a heated seat and there are air vents, but there is no HVAC control. So I find that a little bit weird for a vehicle that's just under $70,000. There are also no window shades, which I think is also a bit of a miss if you're gonna be carrying a family around in here. Uh, so no HVAC controls, no, <laughs> no uh, window shades, uh, but, you do have a couple of charge ports back here and a plug. So you have a USB-A and a USB-C port, as well as an actual jack to plug in something like your computer. So seat comfort, thumbs up. Amenities, eh, kind of a thumbs down. I just wanted to get into a couple of driving impressions and for the most part, they're pretty favorable. On the highway, I feel like the Nautilus is very comfortable and very smooth. It has a nice amount of acceleration to both merge with traffic and pass traffic. And in a city situation, it has just the right amount of power as well for those aggressive maneuvers. As I mentioned when I was talking about the engine, the one thing that's driving me a little bit crazy is that auto stop start system. And I haven't found out how to shut it off yet. I know there's gotta be a way, but I haven't figured it out. Uh, there is no hard button that I've seen on the center stack that has the little A with the circle around it, which is usually how you turn it off. I have a feeling it's embedded in the screen and I just need to play around and figure that out. So stay tuned for when my driving impressions are over because I'll probably show you really quick as an amendment how <laughs> to turn that off. If you are trying to be aggressive to get into a small window of traffic and your engine is off, you're gonna miss that window because there's a little bit of lag between when you take your foot off the brake and when the engine turns back on. So if you're going to not disengage the system, you definitely need to make sure you take your foot off the brake well before the light turns green or before you need to make your turn so that the engine is already on when you start your maneuver. Different way of driving and frankly, I find that a little annoying because sometimes I forget. I wanna say, that in terms of driving impressions, you get a real sense of calm, quiet luxury, which is kind of the point. All right, here's the amendment I promised on where the location of the auto stop start system is. So first I'm going to again show you the buttons surrounding the info screen. There is nothing here that has that A with the circle on it and even when you go into settings or apps, 
there is nothing <laughs> that shows you how to shut it off. So I kind of found it by accident when I was playing around with something else, but you hit this button right here and look what pops up. Driver assistance and the ability to shut up, shut off your auto stop start. Yeah, and shut it up. Um, but that's how you do it and you have to do that every time. Now it is time to wrap up this review. So thank you for sticking around with me to check out the new interior and some of the new tech features on the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. I hope you also follow us on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com and I will see you down the road.